I have a beautiful day today. And which day is not a beautiful? Every day is beautiful when uh, we live it in the name of uh, God. When we wake up in the morning and in the name of God, we start to do whatever we have to do with it. It's a, that is a beautiful day for us. All our all our life is a beautiful life, and I think that is what we need to to show and all the people uh, when they look us. You know, they have to find, you know, happy faces, beautiful people. Mm. Give thanks, God, for every minute we live in His way. Because we remember where, where God take us from and make us free and we know where we're going follow Jesus and we know where we going to spend all our eternity on the Lord's house in the Lord's presence there's a big reason to be happy and say thanks God for this beautiful day, for this beautiful life. Because all of you looks beautiful for us. And each of you, uh, it's very, very important for God. And I hope I am important for God too. Because nobody loves us like God loves us. Uh, questions everywhere and all the time we have questions. We have a question for somebody else, and we have a question for ourselves too. And uh, every day, many times, God has and make questions to us too. And He is waiting for an answer. And sometimes it's very hard. To answer God. Because sometimes we are not understand his questions. Sometimes we don't want to understand his questions. I think many times we are not able, able to answer God. And we find so many ways to get out of there to to forgive about about the questions but the question is in there the questions today i don't know what is the question for you but i know what is the questions for me and each of us has to keep our ears open and a heart ready for those questions. Because I know everybody has something to answer. This, what we have in the gospel today, they talk about the, something happened in the Jerusalem. There's a feast over there. A lot of people was happy, happy, but they, they 
tell us about a particular place. This says there's a pool full of water there, and a lot of people that's around of that pool. And they have a good reason to be in there. I think it's almost the same reason we are here in the temple, in the church this morning. Because all that people need something special for themselves. All those people are sick for something. And they was waiting for the, something happened in the water there. The Bible says one of the, one angel came once in a while and moved the water, you know. And uh, the people think and believe, you know. When that angel came and moved the water, whoever jumped first at the water is going to be, get well by anything, any problem, any physical problem they have. We came to the church this morning, it's a special morning, a special day. We came here because, not because uh, we are good people, great people, but we are here because we need something. We need something to happen in our life. And this morning, something can happen in our life. We, if we listen God, if we listen Jesus, not, not only what the pastor says, but what the Holy Spirit says. The scripture tells us that one of those men in that place was there paralyzed for 38 years. Many years. A long time. He was there. Why? He never has the opportunity to get into the water first. He waiting, 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 waiting. It's a, he has more passion than us. And the, this man uh, is coming from somewhere and he saw with a bunch of people and he, he saw that guy. And he found out this poor man was waiting there for a long, long time. I think Jesus is very smart. He's smart than, than I. He's smart than you. And he knows what the people, what the guy need. The guy need to get well. But he find out too that the guy never going to have the opportunity to jump into the water. Jesus came to say to, to him and, and ask, do you want to get well? That is the question from Jesus. Why he asked him what he already knows? Of course the guy was deep to want to get well. But Jesus needs to hear about us, how we respond, how, what is our answer when he asks. Anything he says, he tells us, is important for us. He knows what you need, 
you know why you came this morning to the church? This question to me was two months ago. Where you want to, you like to, to preach on grace? One of those Sundays? I said yes. But after that, was so many uh, excuses come to my mind. Why me? What am I going to do there? Poor people, they don't understand my English. They're going to come to the church, they're going to hear my, 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 my sermon. But I, know, I don't know if they're going to leave the church empty like they come. But when I mentioned those so many excuses, the only answer I, ha I, hear, I get from, from Jesus is, you have to go. Take your Bible, put your clothes on, and go to there. If you have any problem, fight with Pastor Burke. <laughs> so I don't know what's going to happen after the service. <laughs> I really appreciate it to you guys because I know. Uh, how hard times you had to listen to me. And, uh, but uh, somebody told me this morning, that you forgot what, about what you say. Just think about what God say. So, and I hope if one of my words you understand and is good for you, take it from God and use it. And put yourself, move it. Move yourself. Don't be sitting or lay down on the same place. Questions. Uh, maybe some of the questions. How do you like to be saved? I, I think all of you are saved already. But. Maybe the question is not for you. Maybe the question is one is for one of your brothers, your father, mother, your son, your daughter, your granddaughter, your grandson, your friend. Does somebody work with you in the you know the, the office or whatever? And that is the question. Sometimes, but that's thousands of questions came from God. Some of other questions here from God is, uh, do you like to serve Lord? I think everybody wants to serve Lord. But we have to listen. How, when, and where we need to serve Lord. Excuses. Many excuses. I have no mo motivation on the church for salvation. It's nobody helped me to understand what the salvation is. They says, have to repent it. God's going to go forgive me, but I am not a sinner. I'm a good people. I am a good man. I'm a good woman. I don't hate nobody. I don't offend nobody. I'll be on church every Sunday. But I don't feel any motivation for what? To be a pastor? To be a deacon? Or to be some, uh, you know, some, do something on church. 
I am comfortable to be in church and do nothing. Just listen, come to church, listen to the sermon, and go home. Nothing to do for, do for me. Other excuses is, I have no time. How many of you have time to serve the Lord? Nobody. Because we are using all time, all the time, all our life, in something else. Sometimes we don't separate any time to, 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 to think about what can I do. But Jesus says, just do it. Just start it. Just say yes. Not like the answer of, of, or the excuses of this paralyzed man. He has so many excuses. When, when Jesus asked him, are you like to get well? He says, sir, I have no one to help me. And to the pool, when, when the water is, I don't know this, this, this word, stirred, while I am trying to get in, in someone else come down of me, before of me. There's so many people in the church. It's a lot of people in the church. Somebody else can do the job. Anybody else is better than I. Moses said one time to the Lord, Lord, I can, I can speak right. I have problems. They don't going to understand what I say. It's like the Pastor Jimenez. Why me? A lot of more people. Any one of you guys, if you, if you guys came here in this, this place, you're going to speak better English than I. But we have so many questions, so many, so many excuses. Not because we don't want it. We, got, we want to get well like, like this man. But I have so many problems. That, no, that's a matter what you, what your excuses are. The Lord is great to you. The, the, the love of God is never gone. It's never die. Never quit. The Lord loves you. doesn't matter. Uh, if, if you're working or not working, if you walk or you cannot walk, if you have problems to sleep or you sleep more than 10 hours a day, God is asking you this morning, what do you want me to do for you? What kind of uh, member of grace do you like to be? If you're going to steal like you right now, that's fine. No problem. Jesus uh, made that miracle for that particular guy that was so many people around of that pool 
the pool. Why Jesus don't uh, fix the problem for all that people? We don't know. We don't know. All the time, Jesus is talking to one person. But right now, God is asking to everybody in that place, Jesus select one guy to fix his physical problem. Right now, God is a available for each of us who has problem who wants to be a better christian to who need or he who wants to be following jesus into the eternal life i think that question is for all of us because you know what? We are so many persons here. Everyone is different. But you know, all of us are members of one body. I have five fingers in my hand. And each of us is different. And I have more than five hairs in my, my head. And each of, of those is different. Each of us are different, different thinking, different feelings. But we are still members of one single body. We, we yes, to, 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 to win until we going to get together with this body's head. Jesus is still praying for us because he wants us walking behind him, follow him until we got there and his presence because then we're going to get together. The head and the body is going to be together. I don't know. I hope you understand my because that real uh, emotion to me because this you can buy this kind of life when any amount of money or whatever we can we can pay the price for the Christian life. We have a big reason to keep following Jesus and to heal he into him ask us to get there with him. I hope you guys pray for me and I hope to remember to in my prayers and pray for you guys. It's not hard. For me, it's not hard to pray for you because I see your faces. When I pray to, uh, to God, I close my eyes and I can see all the groups in here today, this morning. And I put my other groups together. And I saw all those faces together. And I can pray for all that group. There's a lot of poor people in, 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 in Mexico. They took the preaching very serious. But they need a lot of more things than just uh, preaching. They need a lot of material uh, things. 
we have a lady in San Luis. She lost one of her legs one year ago. Last week, he, she was not in, in, the, in the church because she was in the hospital. And doctor says it's possible for her to lose the other leg. No money for doctors. No health insurance. A lot of people need more than just. When this guy came to the paralyzed guy, he was only waiting for the, the opportunity to jump in the water. But Jesus came to him and fixed his problem. And when, when he talked back after the, the, this guy excuses, when Jesus talked back to him, he says, pick up your mat and walk. You have to move yourself, your body, and do your work. Do whatever you have to do. And don't come here anymore. And once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. This man, is the first time he saw Jesus, but he listened to him. He was obedient. He do what Jesus says. And he got free with the sick problem. We have the same chance. We have the same opportunity. Not only today, but every day. And take this, and this question and take it with you. And do this, make the same question to somebody else. What do you need from God? I'm not a God, but I can tell you who is God. Who is God? God is the man or the person who gave to me all my needs. He gave me the chance to, to, to say thanks for this beautiful day, my beautiful life, my beautiful family, my beautiful church. Everything is beautiful. That's my God. And that's the same God asking the question, what do you want from God? From God? What do you need from God? Again, thank you for listening to me. I really appreciate it, this opportunity just to do something. The yesterday, I was not sure I can do it. This morning, I have a problem. Hmm? So many excuses in my mind. But you know what? By now, one more time, I understand. God is good. God is good. God loves us. And this, as this communication with you make us be closer in the spiritual way, then I want something this morning. I get something wonderful this morning. And believe me, if God loves you, I am trying to love you too. Because he's the 11th commandment. 
this, this Jesus says, I give you the, a new commandment this today. Love one to the other, one to another. We have to get this in practice and put this in practice. We have to learn and keep loving one to another. That's the only way we're going to be, be there and get together with our head. Our head is Jesus. Thanks again. Uh, God love you too much. And my feeling is God blessing you always on your life.